Welcome to Zanaco Unplugged, a podcast series that takes us inside Zambia's biggest banks, and we have conversations with business leaders, creatives, and innovators, as well as pioneers. We have conversations ranging from business leadership, organizational change, technology, as well as sustainability. My name is Rose CBC, and I'm proud to be your host for season two of Zanaco Unplugged. Today's conversation looks at how technology trends have been changing since 2023. And who better to have these conversations with than the Chief Information Officer from Zanako, Joseph Shiku. Hey, Joseph, how are you doing? Hello, Rose. Good to have you here. Thank you. Ready to talk technology today? Ready to do it. Let's Ready help. to do it. <laughs> no stranger to technology. You can't talk about technology and emerging trends if you do not have Lukonga Lindunda, Executive Director at Bongo Hive. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Fantastic. So this morning, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about technology trends and straight into it, Joseph is so ready to talk about how AI has become one of the most talked about emerging trends when it comes to technology. So what practical approaches do you think organizations and businesses should take in embracing this emerging AI? Yeah, uh, thanks Rose for that. Um, you're right, uh, AI is one of the most talked about technologies now, and it is uh, impacting business operations from the point of view that um, not only from a practical perspective, but mm -hmm. as well as from innovative innovative approaches that are being applied okay. um, on a regular basis. Uh, some of the areas where I do see this being applied um, include customer service. Mm -hmm. And from the point of view that we have seen uh, the likes of chatbots and virtual assistants being deployed in various institutions. Mm -hmm. But what we will see is an enhancement of these AI tools where they're able to handle uh, customer inquiries, as well as much more customer um, uh, requests that do come into into businesses. So from, from that perspective, uh, I see it that uh, AI will be used more to improve the overall uh, customer experience as well as the customer satisfaction score. And from a sentiment uh, sentiment analysis perspective, what we, what we are seeing coming into this space is that um, AI is now being used to analyze customer feedback on a much more real-time basis, which mm -hmm. again allows for businesses to be able to address to this to these issues much quickly, and uh, you know again with the aim of pretty much improving the overall customer experience. Um, the other area where I do see uh, AI being applied is in the space of retail management. Okay. And from two aspects, uh, number one, uh, from a shopping experience perspective. Mm, okay. And um, this is pretty much that AI will be used to analyze and predict customer behavioral patterns, okay. as well as customer preferences. And I'll give you a typical example. Uh, so if Rose walks into a Woolies store, mm -hmm. an AI driven Woolies store time and again, what will happen is the floor attendant will be able to know that Rose has walked into Woolies store. Mm. She loves to get a fur blazer. She loves shoes. She's a size five, you know, and she loves the color of black. You profiled me. Yes, you'd oh, have already been profiled. Goodness. And that in itself presents an opportunity for the floor attendant to be able to offer Rose a very delightful experience, shopping mm. experience. Um, but at the same time, again, be able to upsell different products to Rose that are accustomed to her liking. Okay. So from that perspective, it's a win-win situation. Rose mm -hmm. gets a delightful experience, shopping experience, and the customer, a loyalty and um, uh, loyalty and profitability perspective for the retail for the retail owner. Okay. Um, the other the other area where I do see that uh, this will be applied is by nature of where I sit in the cybersecurity space. Mm -hmm. uh, we're already seeing AI tools being deployed uh, for threat detection. This is pretty much to analyze and monitor traffic, being able to predict anomalies in the network traffic in, in organizations. And this as well has allowed for automated responses to cyber incidents and just making sure that, you know, environments are safe from that perspective. Wow. So, yes, Rose, um, in a nutshell, I think uh, we will continue to see AI being deployed in various uh, sectors 
uh, just with the aim of improving processes, making them much more efficient, making them more personalized, as well as ensuring that processes are sustainable at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. Let's take it back to the basics. There's a viewer out there who probably, or a listener out there rather, mm. who doesn't even know what AI is. What does AI stand for? Oh, okay. So that this is pretty much artificial intelligence. <laughs> I just thought uh, about it. So we're yeah. sitting here and talking AI, AI. Yeah. Does everybody True. know that AI True. is artificial in intelligence? Absolutely. Brilliant example that you've really brought home in terms of the focus being on customer service. So Lukonga, as um, Joseph has taken us through this journey of AI and the practical approaches on how our lives are really going to change, from a company collaborative uh, perspective, where do you see strategies being applied within the context of an organization? For example, how have you done it at Bongo Hive in embracing this emerging giant that is changing our lives? Yeah, uh, good to be here again. Um, so Bongo Hive um, aims to catalyze businesses, right? Okay. Uh, for them to be supported in the start and their growth uh -huh. into becoming Africa's most loved businesses. So we've been doing this for 13 years. And what we've learned is that there are different approaches uh, to approaching the market, right? Mm -hmm. uh, first, that and importantly, uh, because our work, Zanako, is related to, to that, mm. focusing on people and how they think creatively and innovatively mm. is an approach that we have taken over the past few years, mm -hmm. working with startups, but being able to bring the same approaches into corporates uh, right. like Zanako, where we're asking their staff and we're supporting their staff to think creatively, to identify opportunities, challenges, and gaps, and be able to create solutions that meet those specific gaps. So Bongo Hive supports Zanako in those approaches, how do we bring the human side of things? How do we support humans and their staff yeah. in identifying those uh, opportunities? But but then how do they leverage technology to solve those those particular challenges? So um, in the past few years, um, what we've done pretty well is help startups to be agile, yeah. to address market needs. Mm -hmm. And what we are seeing now is organizations like Zanaco are now asking themselves, how can they be agile as well? How can mm. they identify opportunities and move into the market as f as fast or even faster than startups? So that's a real mm. opportunity. And what we are seeing now with uh, uh, platforms or tools like AI is every it almost levels the playing field. Everyone can sort of use these technologies to see what the opportunities are, to use them to go to market faster and create um, 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 products that truly meet customer needs. Mm. Yeah. I love that you bring in the dynamic of um accepting that it's not limited to large organizations or small organizations, but each organization actually needs to start adapting and moving along with the technological changes that are taking place. So from, from your perspective, what do you think are the top three technology changes that we need to look out for from the 2023s, 2024 and going forward? What technology um, changes do we look forward to that will come up in the now time? We have addressed one, <laughs> which is AI. Service, AI. Uh, yeah, and AI. Um, but also just to extend it a little bit, um, when we talk about uh, machine learning and also some of the buzzwords like generative AI. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but let's just say that tools like ChatGPT and Gemini, where we type something and then it generates something for us, mm. those are tools that didn't exist, at least for consumers like you and I, yeah. from two years ago. We right? didn't know about it. When we saw uh, ChatGPT come out uh, in 2022, it was now in the hands of just everyone. Mm -hmm. Whereas all these years, these were tools that were behind the scenes and people were worried, you know, mm -hmm. if we release this tool, you know, will it take over the world, right? And now these tools are available. And now we are asking ourselves if they are in the hands of consumers and staff and, and organizations, what can they do um, to drive their businesses forward? Yeah. And so what we are seeing is sort of the consumerization of AI. Mm -hmm. It's no longer you know, restricted to organizations that have huge computing resources. This is stuff now that you can do on your laptop, on your phone. And that shift is interesting because then everyone can use them. Mm -hmm. And so in 2024, Particularly for organizations, the question is, do we have AI strategies? Do we come up, do we, have we come up with task forces right. where people within organizations can start asking themselves, what are the guidelines? What are the tools, right? And so 2024 is the year in which we begin to think about what are the 
ways in which we can harness this at a personal level mm -hmm. and organizational level. So th this is not just something we watch in movies anymore. No. This is something we have in our hands. And so the practical use of AI tools is what is now happening in 2024, where it's becoming generally acceptable for you to search using AI, to use AI tools freely without thinking about, you know, is the world going to end and such. So AI tools, particularly generative AI tools is, is one. Um, the next one, which we are all used to now and becoming uh, very comfortable with is uh, fintech and digital uh, payments, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can go for many weeks now without having cash, yeah. right? You can imagine what will happen going forward in that you probably have to ask yourself, how does a hundred kwacha bill actually look like? Because <laughs> everything right? is just- Because you actually forget what, yeah. what features are on the actual um, um, money, right? And, and we are seeing that with uh, uh, more integration of platforms, mm -hmm. right? Um, it will be easy. It's becoming even much easier now and faster to move money around. But I think the real benefits are for those that are running businesses because they can transact faster, they can receive their money faster, they can project even faster. So what we are seeing around fintech payments and their uh, exponential growth is that it will continue, mm -hmm. right? And it, you know, it will benefit those that are unbanked, okay. but, but also those that are banked because we are getting to spend our money even you know, better and save our money better. The last one which uh, uh, was referenced earlier is around cybersecurity, right? We know that, particularly with AI tools, it's even becoming worse because now you can create all these uh, clones and whether it's by video and, you know, AI tools can create even better um, um, viruses and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So what we are seeing now is, particularly in 2024, is the emergence of now AI tools that are being used in cybersecurity environments, right? Mm -hmm. So what we do expect is that uh, security tools will continue to improve, but also people need to become even much more aware of what damage and limitations these AI tools are, mm -hmm. can do, and also what cyber cybersecurity, the environment uh, that cybersecurity is, is in, the challenges that it will pose, particularly in digital payments. Right. So it's a mix of all these uh, trends, uh, but most importantly, I like to say, let's make people more aware of what's possible and what's not. Mm -hmm. uh, the more we educate people, the more aware we can be about what, how to use these tools and what the limitations are. Yeah. yeah. It does feel like you're you're really disconnected from all of this, but you've summarized it beautifully in talking about the top three trends. From what we heard you say, you're talking about AI, you're talking about the fintech space, and now cybersecurity. So when you speak about cybersecurity, and you touched on that a little bit, Joseph, and Lukonga talks about risks. Mm. What are some of the risks that you see happening with the emerging technology trends, yeah. and yeah. how do we how do we mitigate yeah. that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some some of the risks that I do see uh, with coming in with the emergence of these technologies such as AI, mm -hmm. uh, number one is around data privacy and security, again, in the realm of, of cybersecurity itself. Mm. Um, there's a lot of data that is used in AI training or machine learning, as it were, and that in itself uh, does um, expose businesses to things such as data breaches. So. There's a need for organizations to be cognizant of that fact and right. to be able to deploy strategies uh, that will be able to mitigate such uh, such issues. Mm. Um, the other issue is is job displacements. I think that's yeah. a huge risk yeah. that needs to be discussed. Um, obviously, with a lot of automation uh, that comes into organizations, there's always a fear that uh, people's jobs will become redundant. Um, but then again, it's it's the responsibility of uh, the management of the organization to ensure that, you know, um, resources are reskilled with the aim of being redeployed into other areas of the business where they can be much more, much more pro productive, mm. which is why uh, partnerships with uh, the likes of Bongo Hive make sense, because then you can actually empower certain resources to be able to do other skills and, you know, provide uh experience in other areas of, of the business. Mm. Um, the other the other risk that I do see is an over dependency on the technology itself. Um, if there's that over reliance, I think there's a single point of failure that might occur at a certain point and this might cause a massive disruption uh, insofar as business operations is concerned. Right. So again, to be able to mitigate that, you need to just ensure that you have uh, robust business continuity plans or contingency plans in place, and just ensure that you've deployed again, uh, to Lukonga's point, 
the strategies that will ensure that your businesses are sustainable over the long run. Mm. So yeah, in, in a nutshell, I think um, what is important is to identify the risks uh, and be able to deploy the mitigating actions, which will ensure that if and when the risks do materialize, the impact thereof is minimalized. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And, and definitely that's not something that we can get away from. Yeah. What is also very interesting now as we come to um, a close is that with all these uh, changes happening in the technology space, time just catches up with us. And as you're aware, mm. Zanako turns 55 this year. Absolutely. With all the changes that you're talking about, what would your final word be as Zanako turns 55? How would you wish Zanako well and what should Zanako look out for as they look forward to another 55, I'd imagine? Yeah. Look, uh, that's a good one. Um, we should expect an exciting future. Okay. Uh, AI does present wonderful opportunities. We should not just look at the, the downside mm -hmm. of it. And as we embrace uh, these technologies, uh, deploy uh, solutions that will enhance uh, the experiences of our customers, uh, deploy technologies that will make life easier uh, for our customers as well from that point of view. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the Zanaka at 55 is something we're all really looking forward to. Absolutely, yeah. you've done such a good job. And with that, um, Zanako turning 55, you were talking about Bongo Hive being around 10 or 12. You're not even sure. You see how many are they? Don't even know how old they are. You see? So Bongo Hive being 12 has been a great partner to, to Zanako. What would you say to Zanako turning 55 this year? Uh, first of all, to ourselves, I hope we you know we get to 55. <laughs> <laughs> you will. It's important. We will. Huh? Yes, you will. Um, yes, and you know I, I'm looking forward to them turning 100. I think we need more Zambian companies that uh, withstand the taste of time. Yeah. Um, and also generate value for various stakeholders, particularly the people of Zambia mm -hmm. as well. So looking forward to their uh, continued growth, um, and and such as well. So, yeah, well done. And that was Lukonga and Joseph sharing their insights on technology trends that have taken over the world in the now times. So as Zanako turns 55, this has been another great conversation on Zanako Unplugged, where we continue to speak to business leaders, creatives, pioneers who take us through different topics and equip us with insights and information on how we can continue to be sustainable in business. Until the next time, this has been Rose CBC, only on Zanako Unplugged. <laughs>